What's going on, gangsters? Movie John seventy five here. Going to talk about Quentin Tarantino movies today. I just recently watched Django Unchained, and I loved it very deeply. Uh, one thing you got to know, going into a Quentin Tarantino movie, you got to expect at least these three things. You got to expect some really vile, uh, just violence and gore. Not always gore, but you're going to see some blood. You're going to hear some profanity. You're going to get some comedy mixed in with it, too. And you're going to hear some great classic music most of the time. Because the boy knows how to pick his music for his movie. He's pulling some pillows up but getting a little comfy, gangster, with my Mountain Dew. Anyway, I'm not going to lie and sit here and tell you that I've been a Quentin Tarantino fan forever. I really only started watching his movies about 10 years ago and he's been directing movies for over 20 years. But he started writing movies at first and he wrote a good one called True Romance which had the formula that later on when he started directing movies kinda ran with what he did with his movies. It's a little different though. Tony Scott ended up directing that movie but they did have some good people in it, like Christian Slater, which I loved his movies from the 80s. Uh, Patricia Arquette. Who else was in it? Dennis Hopper, Brad Pitt. Yeah, the list goes on. Uh, the guy from The Sopranos, the bald guy, I can't remember his name. Uh, the guy from, what was that TV show from the 80s? The Perfect Strangers. Played Balky. He was in it too. Uh, I can't remember his name. But the, it was a pretty good movie. Um... But it would have been better if he would have directed it, I think. But at the time, he, he just was writing screenplays. And he worked at a video store, gangsters. I mean, how, how great is that, to be able to work at a video store? And the boy quit in the ninth grade. He didn't even graduate. Didn't go to film school. He said watching videos at the video store was his film school. And it worked out pretty good. Um, he also wrote Natural Born Killers with Woody Harrelson in it. And... Um, what was that other chick's name in it? Juliet Lewis, I think. That one's a really tripped out, messed up movie. I mean, I, I, I like somebody was on acid. Oliver Stone directed it. Um, but I I really haven't seen it but like twice. And it's really is crazy. But when he started directing movies, like I said, I would only started watching his movies probably 10 years ago. Reservoir Dogs was the first one. Michael Madison, of course he played in it. Uh, Harvey Cartel, which is a great actor, I love his movies too. Uh, a bunch of other guys. Uh, that was one of the, these like these heist movies, you know. I like a lot of. Um, I mean, it's got great music and stuff in it and stuff, but it's not one of my favorite. Uh, but, you know, the best movie I like it is. Um, and that came out like in the early '90s, I think, like '91, '92 somewhere in that area um, and um, you didn't ever really see the actual when they went to you know do the heist you, did, you didn't see it you know and that was the thing about it and the thing he liked to do about it he liked movies like that that you seen the aftermath of it and that was pretty cool and then later on of course everybody knows Pulp Fiction which brought John Travolta back and he had Samuel L. Jackson, which, you know, Samuel L. Jackson's played in a lot of his movies because he, he, that's another thing I like about Quentin. He gets good actors and he, he changes, he puts them in different movies. And some of them he's had in this movie and, some, and they might be in two or three movies and another one might be in another movie or two. He, he kind of like recycles his own actors. So that, you know, that's pretty cool too in a way. Uh, Pulp Fiction is just a thing on its own. I mean, you had uh, John Travolta and Samuel L. Jackson. Of course, you had um, Bruce Willis. I mean, the list goes on. Uma Thurman, you know, that's when she first started getting big, too. And it's, I'm not really doing reviews on them, just kind of talking about them. But I really didn't see Pulp Fiction until early 2000s. I don't know why, I just, I, I didn't really... I don't know, I just didn't get in to want to go ahead and watch it and stuff, and it just took me a long while until I, I finally seen it. I find, I seen that one first, then I finally went back to watch Reservoir Dogs after that. Um, of 
course, then the next one he did was Jackie Brown. Jackie Brown's bring he brought back Pam Greer, just like on Pulp Fiction, he brought back John Travolta, Pam Greer, Lover to Death, Lover movies from the seventies, the black exploitation movies. Great, just makes a gangster stand up and say woo. But anyway, that had a lot of people in it too. I mean, he just brings back and he brought Michael Keaton that didn't do nothing for a few years, and 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 he. You know, and Samuel Jackson's in that, and he even had Chris Tucker in it for a minute or two. You know, and that movie was—he said it really wasn't intended to be like a black exploitation movie from the '70s, but it kind of was in a way a little bit. And it had great music too from the '70s, uh, mostly black black artists and stuff. But um, it really is a good movie, and um, if you ain't ever seen it, you gotta go see it. I'm, you gotta you gotta buy it, whatever. You know, he's got a box set out right now called Quentin Tarantino. I think it's two X's on it or something. It's got all his movies, and it's got the ones that I mentioned that he actually uh, wrote too, I believe. I think they put them in there too, so that's pretty cool. Um, then later on, he did two movies that I'm ashamed to say that I am a Quentin Tarantino fan, but uh, when he did Kill Bill with Uma Thurman, I've actually only watched that movie twice. And I'm ashamed to say I've never finished the movie. Because for some reason, I cannot stay awake. I don't know why. It just bored me in a way. I, that's the only movie that really did not do it for me. I don't know why. But a lot of women love it because of woman power. And Uma Thurman's cutting up people. And, and, and she's fighting in blood. And, I mean, it is gory and everything. I've never made it to watch part two volume two and that's bothered me because that everybody says part two gets better and you'll enjoy it better and go ahead you know so i'm not really i don't know i, I really don't know i just and that's the two movies of his that i don't own and i need to probably get eventually which i want that box set for other reasons like uh, extras and stuff i love watching that and documentaries on stuff but them two movies i just uh, i don't know and <laughs> You know, I like a lot of people, newer people that's new to, like, they don't really like older movies, and they don't really get into watching older movies. They don't understand, they say Quentin is unique and comes up with such great stuff. I'm not taking nothing away from Quentin or anything, because he, he knows how to direct and he does good at that, but he does take stuff from his film school, movies he watched in the 70s and the heist movies Reservoir Dogs um, Pulp Fiction's different in its own way I mean that really is his masterpiece I believe uh, Jackie Brown like I said the black exploitation movies then he comes out with Kill Bill well Kill Bill he was a fan of Sonny Chiba Bruce Lee and stuff and even you know the patch on her eye and the outfit, the, the black and yellow, that's from Bruce Lee right there. The patch is from a movie called They Call Her One Eye. He's even said this in interviews, that he, you know, he brought that stuff back. He kind of took from stuff. I'm not saying he stole it and says, yeah, I did, you know, he tells you that, you know, that, that's where I got the inspiration from. So, you know, that's pretty cool. You know, I would do stuff like that too if I directed it. Of course it was, because you're... I don't know, and then you gotta like that era of movies, you know, a lot of people don't understand and they don't like it, but they think Clinton just just made up all this shit, and he didn't, And but he's, like I said, he, he knows how to do it, he gets the right people to do it, and he makes it his own, you know, so, but he did, then, then he did Death Proof, a lot of people don't like that movie, that is part of the car exploitation, they call it, car exploitation, they call it, or whatever, Kind of like Vanishing Point and stuff. And they even mention that in the movie. It's got great music and stuff in it. And um, it's got Kurt Russell. You know, he's a stunt, uh, stunt driver. And he was a stuntman, basically. And uh, he likes to lure women into his car, which is death proof. Race down the road and kill her ass. Or wreck him off the road and stuff. Then he meets the wrong people. The wrong women. And uh, they kind of reverse that back on him which is the funny part of the movie. Um, Eli Roth is in that too. 
that was part of the double feature from uh, the Grindhouse set, the Planet Terror, which Robert Rodriguez directed. And um, that was like a, a ode to the Grindhouse from the 70s, which played these exploitation movies and stuff. That's basically where they got it. And they put it on, you know, I, I would have loved to went to the movies to see both of them back to back, but I didn't get to do it. Because when it first came out, I just really wasn't into that kind of stuff, and I didn't understand it, just like I know people today that really don't really get it and stuff. Um, but Planet Terror is a good movie, too, which Quentin played in that, and I think he had a hand in helping him produce it. I think he was actually producing it, too. So um, Death Proof is, is another one that a lot of people probably don't like, or they don't really get, or they say it's slow in areas. And another thing about Quentin's movies, you got a lot of dialogue. And a lot of dialogue, sometimes you think, in regular movies, you wouldn't need it. Just like Samuel L. Jackson said one time, in the movies with Quentin, you know, you get somebody who gets out of a car, walks across the street, goes upstairs, pulls out a gun, shoots somebody. You don't see, When you read the screenplay, you just read what they're doing. But no, in his movies, they stop and they talk, and it's got a lot of dialogue to it. And sometimes it's comical and funny, especially with Samuel L. Jackson when he's in it. And then sometimes it's not. Um, but it, it's interesting to me, it is. I, I don't know about everybody else, but I really love the dialogue in his movies. And he goes off out into space sometimes. And he just, but. Next up, Inglorious Bastards. Um, one of my least favorites too. That's with Kill Bill. I, I mean, it's part of Nazi exploitation, and that came out in the sixties and seventies with them type of movies about Nazis and stuff. Uh, but it's you know it, it is what it is. Brad Pitt's in it. Um, and what's that? Chris Crispin. They call him Crispin Waltz, which also played in the new Django, which was great. Um, and you know, it's basically about a hired crew that's killing, just like Bruce, uh, not Bruce Willis, but um, Brad Pitt said, we're, you know, killing Nazis. And uh, of course they go to kill Hitler and everything, and it's it's really fictional and everything about that part and stuff, but um, it's got a lot of subtitles, and that maybe that's where I kind of kind of slow down a little bit, because like I said, he's got the dialogue, so he's going to have a lot of subtitles to it, but... Um, it's worth watching and stuff, and I even got it in my collection. I bought it at the flea market real cheap one time, so I picked it up. Uh, and, and now you got uh, Django uh, Unchained, which is basically his ode to the spaghetti westerns that came out in the 60s and 70s. And you ask what a spaghetti western is, if you don't know what it is, it's them movies were directed by Italians back then. And of course, Italians did a good horror movies at that time too and, and some of them just wanted to do westerns. Clint Eastwood played in quite a few of them, uh, like a fistful of dollars, a few, a few dollars more, The Good, The Bad, The Ugly I think was one of them. You know there's a bunch of them out there. Even the original Django which was taken and of course in this movie you got uh, Jamie Foxx which is a black guy and he's Django. Uh, back then you had uh, Franco Nero was the original Django, and he, and he's actually in this movie for a little part. He walks up to the bar and asks uh, Django what his name is and how he spells it, and Django tells him, and he tells him the D is silent, and the gangster looks at him and says, "I know." Gets up, and walks away. And the average movie person that goes out to watch this does not know who that is, has no clue who that was, but to me, it made a gangster proud, and I liked it. And I said, "That's good. That's what I would do. I'd bring stuff back like that." Django's basically about a slave, turns into a hitman, and goes back and um, looking for his uh, wife. And uh, there's a lot of bloodshed in that movie, and it's a good western. You don't really have to like westerns to like it, I think. That's just, it was perfect in every way. And of course, just like all the other ones, great soundtrack. Whew, I went through quite a bit there in a little short time. 20 years right there. Quentin Tarantino, thank you for all that. But the thing I heard recently, I watched the interview, where uh, Howard Stern said he heard somewhere that Quentin only wanted to make 10 movies in his, in his career and then retire and then just write movies. Um, so really, we're counting up eight movies already. 
and we only got two more to go. And I hear that they're going to make a Kill Bill 3. So if Quentin is only going to do two more movies, I wish he wouldn't do another Kill Bill. Uh, make something else. Because that's the only ones he made sequels from. And none of his movies need sequels, I don't think, really. But maybe where that one was so long, he had to make a sequel. I don't know. I don't really know how he could make a part three because I heard, you know, Bill's dead. So, I don't know. But he said he didn't want to be one of these washed up directors later on that hit and miss. And you just like, yeah, he used to have it. He don't have it no more. He wants to go out on top. Which that's pretty good, but I kind of like Jack Hill, I guess. I don't know. Jack Hill was in the 70s and did some good exploitation movies and didn't do but a handful. And, and just, he just, that was it, you know. And, and that's uh, one of his inspirations, too, uh, Quentin's is. So maybe he wants to do something like that. I hope he don't, though. I hope he continues to make more movies. Because if he writes a movie, just like we go all the way back to True Romance and uh, Natural Born Killers. And somebody else directs them, they're not going to be like his movies because they weren't exactly like him. You know, Quentin can only, when he writes a movie, he has to direct it because they don't see what he sees. At least that's the way I see it. I don't know about you, if you see it that way, gangsters. But this is just my video of talking about Quentin Tarantino movies because I love his movies. I love them exploitation movies of the 70s. I love the spaghetti westerns. I love the black exploitation movies. I love the car movies and stuff like that. It's just it's something to me that I just I really got into over the last, I don't know, five years. And I'm glad I have because there's some great movies out there. So you got you got to expand and try to watch stuff like that. And... Um, Maybe you can, maybe you can't, I don't know. But everybody's got their favorites, and Quentin is one of my favorite directors. But until next time, one more big drink, because my mouth's getting dry talking all this Quentin Tarantino talk. Man, that's some good dude. Till next time, gangsters.